G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. Well, I hope you've seen my two hour opus, the comparison between the Canon R6 II, the Nikon Z5 II and the Sony A7 IV. If it wasn't for what we are seeing right here, that video would have been a whole lot harder. And why? Because the video is so huge that it exceeded one terabyte. And once I started getting all the various renders, we got up to near one and a half terabytes. Now, if you're creating things that are that huge, well, you need really reliable storage because you're doing so much work. It's so much effort. There's such an investment in time. You wanna make sure that you've got a backup on the fly as you go. You also need lots of space and fast IO. And this drive, well, it's pretty awesome. It's from Ugreen. It's the DXP 4800 Plus, and it has a lot of features for photographers and videographers to keep us out of trouble, keep things moving quickly, and give us a lot of cool I.O. to boot. So first, let's start with the setup. What were the basics to get me going? Well, you can see here, I've got a pile of WD drives. These are four terabyte drives. So that's perfect. If you decide to go RAID 5, for example, and have one drive of redundancy, well, this means that the 16 terabytes that you see here becomes around 12 terabytes with a one hard drive failure of backup. You quickly get another four terabyte drive into your system and you are running along safely again. And why do we have the NVMe here? Well, this is because this NAS has two slots in the bottom of it to increase the speed that you can write to and from, and this is essentially a cache. Fantastic. It works out which are the files that you're using the most, and it will basically cache them here on the NVMe. In this case, I've got a four terabyte NVMe, and this is your hot cache. You've basically got a mixture of storage, redundancy, speed, and I.O. All in this package for currently $594.99 USD. All right, let's get into the details. What we're gonna do here is unbox this beauty, and it is quite a beauty. Yeah, it's cool. see IO there along with it's got this, this magnetic grill which is kind of cool keeps the dust out but it just sits in there magnetically which is nice what I'm going to talk about is the IO we have power we have two Ethernet a 2.5 and a 10 gigabits two USB USB 2.0 another USB and an HDMI port to plug your monitor into so that's extra cool. On the front we have another USB, USB-C, an SD port, power and drive activity. We can see there's already some RAM in there, so you could upgrade the RAM. NVMe, we're gonna pop in there, the four terabyte. These are the hard drives. I have to say that's one of the easiest hard drive installations I've ever done. The fact that you don't have to use screws to get those spinning hard disks in there is awesome. Yes, there was three screws for the NVMe, but that was very, very quick to get up and running. We've populated all of the drives in the NVMe into the Ugreen. Now we're gonna connect them to my M2 Ultra Studio, which is not here in this space, it's actually at my desk. So we'll go there now and check it out. Speed testing with Blackmagic Design 1, 2 and 3 gigabyte files, we can see that the 1 gigabyte files move the fastest between 600 and 700 megabytes per second. 
That's pretty awesome. That means a one gigabyte file will take just over a second to move from your computer. As we get larger files, it gets slightly slower. With a 33 gigabyte file, one of my videos, it sat at around 400 megabytes, slightly above, slightly below, to move that 33 gigabytes in around a minute. Of course, cloud storage is an option, but as we can see here, it is expensive per annum, depending on who you go with. And this is only half the storage compared to what we have in the drive, which is almost 11 terabytes. It soon becomes more expensive loading to the cloud than storing locally on a NAS. And of course, we can't forget the differential in upload speeds. As we can see with the NAS, it might be somewhere between 400 and 700 megabytes per second. When it comes to uploading to the cloud, well, that is relative to the speed of your internet. For example, here, I only get two and a half megabytes per second, which means going to the NAS is something like 200 times faster at a minimum. Now, of course, internet speeds vary all over the world. Some are faster and some are even slower. Here is a list of compatible hard drives, NVMe, as well as memory, which can go inside the Ugreen. Please pause for a closer look or jump on the Ugreen website for more details about the drive's compatibility. And looking at the Ugreen smartphone app, opening the NAS software. We come to the home screen, of which you can see some of the many apps that they have available. We can see how the system is running, CPU usage, RAM usage, and so on. And then we have apps. We have apps like the theater, which allows us to go in and look at videos, which I'll show you shortly that you can also use this via Apple TV. And you can just load a file, and this is loading off my NAS, which is pretty awesome. There it is, playing. So cool, off the NAS. And if you haven't seen this video, you definitely should go and check it out. But not only can we do that, we also have other features like photos. And we go OK, and we go into the albums. Here's our recent album. And these are all photos that I loaded locally into the hard drive from my computer. And you can view them both in the browser on a computer or a laptop, anywhere you like, but also on your phone, anywhere you like. There we go. And another thing that I love about this is fantastic metadata that shows us date, file information, but also it's showing us the camera, the exposure, the aperture. This is really, really useful for me as a photographer. And I will now use this to store my images. This is a great catalog. The catalog also has the capacity to have AI searches. We can upload images as well. So if we go to photos, here's an image from Framefest. Click that, upload it, and it goes to, we just say where we want to upload it to. Photos, confirm, 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 confirm. And that is now going to go up to the photos. And if we refresh this, there it is. It's appeared and it will also appear on the desktop. That is so cool. These are all of the images and this is the one I just uploaded from my phone. There it is right there. This is also the software that you can access remotely. This is the NAS software, the actual library. And there is that image there. And of course, we've got the data that comes along with it. That includes the size, what phone, and all of those settings, and as well as GPS data, which you automatically get with an iPhone. And then there's actually a map here, which is pretty cool, which can then take us to Google Maps. And that's where I was. That's pretty awesome that all of that is built in. And here's a quick look at the Apple TV app. There it is, Ugreen NAS. You get this great interface. These are all the files sitting on my hard drive. Then I can go and sit on my couch 
and watch them from the Ugreen. Beautiful interface, as we would expect on the Apple TV. Jump into the file. There it is. We can play it, and it plays absolutely awesomely. And there it is. No problems at all. This is sped up just so you can see it working in full 4K. I think this is totally cool. Jumping between videos and looking at all sorts of different things. That is from the hard drive to your Apple TV on the local network. All right, everybody. Well, there you go. This project was absolutely massive. Couldn't have been achieved without storage like this and ensuring that it was backed up, that I had some redundancy. I put weeks into this project. I had somehow managed to lose it. Well, that would have been an absolute disaster. So that's where storage like this comes in handy for me. And it can certainly come in handy for perhaps someone like you. Now, please check out the links below so you can purchase your own version of this NAS. I think it's great value. I think it's got fantastic I.O. As we talked about, it's got the SD port, the HDMI port, a couple of USB-A ports, lots of ways to plug in, and of course, your two Ethernet ports, one 2.5 and one 10 gigabit or 10 GBE. All right, everybody. Well, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about this amazing NAS from Ugreen? Please let us all know in the comments below. Tell me, what, what do you use? How do you back up? Do you use the cloud or do you use local storage? And do you have a redundant array? Do you even have multiple redundant arrays? All right, it's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe. Please share and please like. All right, bye for now.